Yeah, this is great. So one thing I'm kind of wondering about here um, is I could see like almost like a Graham Oppie thinking right now. Um, we're kind of if you're maybe like some sort of like atheist, you'd have to argue that in some sense, um, consciousness is necessary in like a brute fact way, whether it's like attached to panpsychism or there's some sort of like brute fact where consciousness could just kind of like emerge um, and it's necessary. But at the same time, you'd have like maybe like the idea that maybe a skeptic would say, hey, well, you have this idea that there's a mind at the foundation, um, God, and that's necessary. So it seems like we'd have these two competing theories. Um, they both say consciousness is necessary to a degree. And like, how do, how do we weigh out? these two different ideas so how would you kind of respond to that kind of objection right well Oppie, i've actually debated him in the literature on this very question mm -hmm. uh he critiqued my argument for god in the european journal of philosophy of religion and i responded to him and i also responded to him in the journal called faith and philosophy and mm -hmm. opie is 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 basically just mistaken i mean first of all he recommends that maybe some version of physicalism or materialism is true. Well, I, I've already argued in a number of places that, that and, and more and more atheists are admitting that consciousness just isn't physical. That's mm -hmm. just isn't. And it's pretty obvious. But but then he says that the, the maybe the emergence of it is contingent, but so what? We have a lot of uh, emergent properties uh, throughout the universe. And so what's the big deal? Well, I respond by saying, no, we don't. What we have are new structural properties, meaning that if you take hydrogen and oxygen to put it together, we get a new structural arrangement because H2O is arranged in a certain way. But that's not getting a brand new kind of property. That's just mm. rearranging the old stuff into a new structure. So the examples of so-called immersion properties are just structural rearrangements. They're not brand new properties. And, and then I argued that if you do have a genuine emergent properties in the world, then the question is can be raised about them as well. Because uh, one of the things an emergent property is defined as is something that in principle is utterly unexpected and predicted if we have an exhaustive knowledge of the physics and the chemistry that underlies it. So they, they're inexplicable scientifically. And uh, so that was another thing. And then uh, I responded to him with another point. But what I'm going to suggest is that you just can't help yourself to a contingent brute fact like this, mm. if there is another explanation, if there's another competing theory that actually provides an explanation for that brute fact, especially if that brute fact doesn't is not at home in your worldview. So take at Opie's atheistic worldview. Let's face it. Consciousness is just not a natural entity in his worldview. Mm -hmm. if, if you had... Uh, of an understanding of the Big Bang and, and what happened, you would never in a million years predict that consciousness would ever appear. So consciousness is a very bizarre entity for the atheist, and they have to do ad hoc explanations to kind of shoehorn it on their worldview. We don't. Consciousness fits like a hand in a glove in a theistic worldview. Well, they can't then just announce that this is a contingent proof fact when it's when it doesn't fit the rest of their ontology, but it does fit their rival theories ontology, namely the theist ontology. That is the worst kind of begging the question that you can find when you have to slap on something that isn't natural to your view, but is actually much more at home in your opponent's worldview.